Welcome back to the Psychedelic Spotlight Podcast. I am your host, David Flores, CEO of Global Track Solutions. And with me here today is a familiar face to the Psychedelic Spotlight Podcast. He is Daniel Carcillo, CEO of Wisana Health. Daniel, uh, how are you doing? Doing well, David. Yourself? Doing pretty good. As I mentioned before we jumped on, never a dull moment here in the psychedelic space. <laughs> never, a, never a dull moment. Uh, I think when you're creating um, new care and then trying to deliver that care, there's going to be a lot of uh, exciting days as as we as we build this sector out. Yeah, most definitely. Um, so I want to thank you again for coming on. To, uh, just to get a quick update here. I know a lot has gone on since we last had you here on the podcast. Um, so just get uh, some updates here on everything and the progress that the company's been making. I guess uh, to start, uh, since we last spoke, Wasana Health has uh, listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange. I just want to get your take and your thoughts on that, how that has sort of, you know, perhaps uh, created a bigger audience for the company and uh, just what that process has looked like uh, so far for you guys. Yeah, so we moved pretty quickly uh, once we made the decision to go public um, to be able to better advocate, um, educate, raise awareness for not only traumatic brain injury, mental illnesses derived from TBI, but also um, getting the proper understanding across about psychedelic medicine and the work necessary that goes into personalizing and individualizing this type of care. Um, so there's, you know, from, from the education and awareness standpoint and, and having a platform and now a public company, um, that's been exciting. Uh, it's been exciting. It's obviously hard work, um, but, you know, our team is no stranger to that and, and drug development care delivery is, is not easy. And so um, we appreciate, you know, being on the CSC, working with them. Um, we are just most recently um, listed on the OTC now and, and working our way towards um, a NASDAQ uplisting. And I think with all of the um, announcements and partnerships that we have uh, coming out, as well as uh, an acquisition, it's, it's, um, it's an exciting time for the company and, and uh, we're looking forward to the future. Yeah, I mean, you guys are moving along at a very steady pace, um, and I know that's a credit to the hard work that uh, you and your team have put in here over the last uh, several months, um, and it's also exciting to hear, you know, that the NASDAQ is on the horizon. That's the place to go right now for psychedelic companies. We've already seen a couple of them uh, move over, so uh, really exciting news there for you guys. Um, another bit of exciting news that came out recently was the announcement of your partnership with the University of South Carolina, um, where you guys plan to develop what's called the Brainstorm Lab. Do you want to share a little bit more about this partnership, how it came to be, and what you hope to achieve through it? Of course. Yeah. Um, we're, we're really excited to, to be working with the University of South Carolina and more specifically uh, the Brainstorm um, Institute and creating the Brainstorm Lab at the University of South Carolina. So um, Brainstorm was founded um, as a 501c3 by a former U.S. SOCOM um, operator of 14 years. It's also a two-time Golden Glove, former winner in New York. Uh, he's a neuroscientist. He's a neurosurgeon. He's also a chaos physicist. Um, and he's experienced 23 concussions uh, over his lifetime. And so like him, he's intimately experienced um, what TBI can rob from you. And he's also been rehabilitating himself um, and, and has created these exercises uh, as well as we have um, at our fingertips a lot of novel imaging um, and, and classified information that will become declassified as far as what the military has been looking at uh, into what happens with traumatic brain injury from the uh, concussion pathology standpoint, as well as from the symptomology and how to do two things, rehabilitate people that have been injured. And then instead of smashing a glass on the floor, and figuring out how to glue those pieces back together, we're gonna to go upstream and we're going to prophylactically uh, figure out exercises that we can help um, people protect their brain before they know they're going into battle. So that's um, what's so important about what we are looking at is, is, the, is the pre. Um, you know, we have the post with SANA 0013 going through FDA and, and Health Canada approvals. Uh, most recently last week, we got our uh, pre-IND number, which is really exciting. Um, and, and so that's great, but we're not satisfied there. We want to work in the acute and we want to work in the pre-phase. So at the University of South Carolina, we'll not only 
you know, figure out why that glass got broken. Um, but we will implement um, through a number of different novel ways, uh, better diagnostics, uh, as well as um, uh, just continuing, continuing to work on the most cutting edge science of, of things that we can do to prevent um, the downstream sequelae of, of TBI and the symptoms. Yeah, most definitely. Now you mentioned, you know, what TBI can rob from you. And I mean, I think no one knows better as far as what TBI can rob from an individual than yourself. You know, your story has been well documented, but also your story of gaining back, you know, what TBI started to rob from you and take from you and how you were able to get your life back, you know, um, part of it, of course, through the use of uh, psychedelics. Um, and so, you know, we've seen more and more stories of other retired professional sports athletes coming out. Steven Johns being uh, one of the more recent ones, uh, another retired uh, NHL player. And it, it seems to me that this topic of TBI and uh, particularly with, you know, retired professional sports athletes from high impact sports seems to be bubbling more and more to the surface here. So I'm curious, you know, with your story certainly resonating, you know, throughout professional sports, um, how, how do you hope to continue, you know, with sauna health and being able to create solutions, um, you know, for individuals like yourself that are coming out of retired, uh, retirement, perhaps suffering from TBI? Unfortunately, our reality as concussion survivors and traumatic brain injury survivors is that we don't have any endpoints. So it's 2021. The first case of CT was described as dementia puglistica in 1923. And we're almost 100 years later we still don't have TBI endpoints. Um, there's a number of different reasons for that. And the league that I formerly played in is, is, um, was active in making sure that we don't have those endpoints. Um, so that's 2.0 of what WeSANA wants to work on. And right now we're working on um, helping people through the actual symptomology that can be derived from traumatic brain injury, like anxiety, depression, and with the number one cause of death being suicide, suicidal ideation. Uh, we see that a lot in our veteran community and it's not, it's not um, just beholden to that community. I mean, a lot of former athletes have taken their own lives and uh, it can be directly linked to traumatic brain injury. So twofold, right? We wanna support people like Steven Johns. We also wanna wake people like him up um, and, and, and get him to understand that the symptomology that he's suffering from is most likely derived from the repetitive head trauma and the subconcussive hits that he's endured over a long career. And that causes physical and chemical changes in the body and the brain. Um, and so the first step to this, it's going back to why we went public, is creating education and awareness for people to identify the symptomology that they're suffering from that's robbing their quality of life. Once they're able to wake up to that, then they're able to wake up to, okay, let's look at this. Do I need help? And um, if your life's becoming unmanageable, much like an addict due to injury, then, then that scares people into doing what Steven did, which is courageous, which is not derived from, from a medical diagnosis. It's, it's himself. Like, like I made the decision, these symptoms are really bad. And I was suffering from seizures and, 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 a, and a, um, a whole host of other things. But um, if we can empower people to look at their life and, and question um, and then make really responsible decisions, that's where we want to live. These aren't um, medical recommendations. These are just, you know, identifying and sparking in people to be able to, to look at certain things in their life that, that may not be optimal. And, and then the third part to that is like, once we do that, then we can ask for help and we can get better. And we have at WeSANA, we're developing these solutions that are gonna be FDA approved to address the symptomology. And then the second part is to address TBI biomarkers with the smartest neuroscientists, neuro, um, people specific to, to the, the brain, but also the body, the vestibular, all of these different systems that tie into TBI. So if we can get TBI right, which we're on the right path with the right people, then we truly believe 
as a company, we can, we can diagnose everybody in a much more poignant way and then do what we're say we're going to do, which is deliver more personalized, individualized medicine to sufferers. Yes, we're starting with TBI, but we know when we nail TBI, we will have one of the most comprehensive diagnostic tools on the planet. And right now, Pfizer, GSK, these big boy biotech companies, they don't measure anything. They ask you where you're depressed and when you're depressed. We're going to measure everything. And, and that way, we will be able to deliver, like I said, um, healing in a much more poignant way. So that's a long-winded answer of saying, um, you know, for the TBI community and for people like Stephen, um, we're here as a, as a support system to help identify that we're suffering and then, and then help identify how we can be rehabilitated. That has to do with psychedelics. And it also has to do with a lot of other tools that have nothing to do with the, um, the actual compound. Yeah, no, no, most definitely. And you talk about that support system. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, you also mentioned the former league that you, you know, that you played for. I'm curious if there's any, do you think that there's any hope to perhaps one day? I mean, I think yeah, I can say this player safety needs to be made more of a priority in a lot of different sports, not just, you know, not just the NHL. Um, you know, I look at a, a brutal hit, you know, John Tavares took uh, in the playoffs recently. Um, and the first thing that came to mind was, man, you know, what is he going to suffer from now, you know, from this? Whereas in the past, you know, I'd be like, oh, man, what a crazy hit. You know, I mean, my own perception is sort of changing now more to the player safety. And so I'm wondering, as more and more people start to become aware of this and hear stories like yourself, you know, and stories like Stephen John's, you know, if you think there's going to come a day where Wisana can possibly work a lot closer with some of these professional sports leagues um, and work hand in hand in developing better diagnostic tools and options, you know, treatment options, or if you think that that's maybe something that's too pie in the sky, I'm just curious to get your thoughts on that. Absolutely not. We want to work with leagues like the WBC. We have a proposal into the NFL. Um, we have, had discussions with the professional fight league. I've had discussions. I've gone right to the NHL AA. Um, and unfortunately the NHL, this is just the reality. They are the last professional sports league on earth to admit a link between repetitive head trauma and neurodegenerative disease. So they don't see a problem. And so what's the point of creating a solution? So we work directly with players rather than go to a league like that. Um, but I just got off a long call with the World Boxing Council, and it's, it's really refreshing when you work with people. And I've always, in my advocacy, compared hockey players being knocked out under a minute to being out there in less than five, six days to the WBC, which is you have to stay out for over 120 days from any sparring or fighting. Where's the disconnect? Because the brain injury here is just as severe as the brain injury here. It's a brain injury. And, and so there's a space in between that doesn't make sense to me. And, and, um, and I'm not a medical professional. I'm just a layman who's you know, experienced this. And I see the, the faults in the way that this is set up. And that's truly because we, we just don't have those endpoints. Um, and so, you know, with, they have so much litigation going on with the NHL that, um, that it's hard for me to see how they could in the near future accept or adopt a program like this, but I'm, I'm building that. That's what I've been building the last, yeah. you know, to be honest, it's taken me a while, it's seven years. And then I found the recovery that I, that I needed to take this and uh, this company to the next step to be able to actually deliver on on a promise that i've been making to people through my advocacy um before i die there we will have this up and running and um do i hope that the nhl adopts a program like this absolutely do i is it a is it a diagnostic program to make a diagnosis no it's a diagnostic program to identify deficiencies that can do the same thing for david flores that they can do for john Tavares. John Tavares had a severe injury. If you don't have a picture pre that injury, how on earth can you take a picture after the injury 
and then say he's good. Um, so that's yeah. where I come from. Just a very pragmatic way of thinking. If you don't have a before and an after, then then you can't put them together and really identify those those deficiencies in the brain, in the heart, in the eyes, in everything, not just the brain. So this is how we view it. And I'm very confident, like once they see what we build with the WBC, what we're continuing to build, we've already got a foundation for this. Um, there will be a lot of adoption. I'm very confident. Yeah. And I think as, as the platform that you guys have continues to grow and continues to get bigger, um, you know, I think it's going to start to open a lot of doors that, um, you know, have remained shut. And again, I just commend the determination, you know, that you continue to work with. Um, I think it's going to inspire a lot of very important changes in the years to come. Uh, last question, Daniel, before I let you go here, I know you're a busy man. Um, I can't believe we're already over halfway through 2021. Um, so with looking at the final half of 2021, you know, what do you, what do you hope to accomplish or achieve? You know, I know that sounds a little corny, but I mean, what do you hope, uh, how do you hope to close the, the second half of the year out? All right. Well, uh, in the next two months, there's going to be a lot of um, exciting, solidifying um, these these MOUs that we have and these partnerships um, that we have, as well as this definitive agreement and acquisition that will be coming down the pipeline soon. Um, again, we're on the forefront of developing care, then you need to be on the forefront of delivering that care. And we're taking a much different approach um, than adult use. Uh, we need support for our veterans. We need support for our athletes who are suicidal in the population that we work with. Um, so that, those are going to be some exciting things that we're going to be able to announce here in the coming months, as well as our partnership with MAPS. Um, it's going to be huge. Uh, we are going to be at the forefront of creating um, that care delivery that's patient focused. Um, and, and again, you know, we hear it a lot about psychedelics, I truly believe if you don't understand psychedelics, then you try to um, actually start tweaking the molecules in a traditional biotech way, which has failed us. Yet, a lot of these psychedelic companies want to take that model that's failed us all and use it here. I say good luck to them. We're going to use the, the compounds and deliver the care that's patient focused, uh, just the way that MAPS believes in it. And the reason that we have a billion dollar industry right now is because of MAPS and no other reason, and because of the strength of their science. So I pray that these other companies are doing good science, number one, not just racing. And I also am grateful that we can establish a partnership to really deliver this care in a patient-focused way and have control over the way that we deliver it. And um, that's, that's really exciting. You know, that's, that's really exciting. And so those things coupled with you know what we're going to be announcing here soon that's going to be coming out of um, the University of South Carolina uh, in the form of, of these diagnostics that we can use in the field right away with youth sports and collision. It's not about not playing sports. Cardiovascular disease, disease kills many more millions of people than TBI does in this country, um, uh, almost six times as much. So we have to get our kids to be active but we have to get them to be aware and smart of the symptoms and, and then also um, understanding that, you know, we need better things to track them. So implementing that into the youth sports is going to be really exciting. So that um, all of those things coupled with um, a few more that, that I, that I won't mention right now. Um, yeah. It's going to be a pretty amazing year. It's like, I know everybody around um, has had, troubling times right like with mm -hmm. with being alone yeah. um and and i think that says a lot of us as a society and that's why i'm so excited about these medicines not only to address people with with actual diagnoses but also others that need to create that relationship with themselves so if they find themselves in another pandemic they can be comfortable because if you have a really strong relationship with yourself you can be comfortable in any situation, you know? And so I think I was viewing this pandemic as just like, I know it might sound weird and, and I, I've lost friends um, as well, but as a blessing, um, because I think it really showed us how deficient we are in those relationships with ourselves. 
And I think if we can get more comfortable there, which is what some of these medicines promote, um, then we can be comfortable in any situation. And um, so hopeful that uh, hopefully this, you know, the world turns around for the better and, and we're able to be with each other because we're also human beings. So once establishing that relationship with the self, then it's like, man, I want to be in front of you. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it feels a lot better, right? I want to feel your energy rather than look at a screen. So um, that's happening, which is exciting. And yeah, man, it's, um, it's been a really amazing year, you know, both personally and, and for us as, as a company. And, and so couldn't be happier. Yeah. And I mean, I look forward to seeing, you know, the, the ongoing progress um, that uh, you guys continue to make. I mean, already the first half of the year has been, uh, it's so exciting to watch everything that has happened. Um, and so I personally look forward to continuing to see the progress that you make. And you've got a wonderful team there around you. Everyone, I believe, is motivated and moving in the right direction. So again, I commend you for doing what you've done. I know it's been a long road just to get to where you are here right now. I know there's still a long way to go, but uh, you've come a long way, my man. And uh, I just, I love, I love, love following the story and uh, love seeing the inspiration that, uh, that you move forward with, um, you know, along this path. Thanks brother. Yeah, man. I appreciate your support. You've always been a great supporter and, and I enjoy talking to you and yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll keep trying to provide this hope for people and, um, and access to this therapy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much, Daniel. I look forward to having you on the uh, podcast again, hopefully bigger and uh, fantastic updates lie ahead. Cool, buddy. Thanks, Thanks. David.